Hey everyone, before we get into today's video, I just wanted to take a minute to talk about today's sponsor, Ridge. Ridge offers the best slim and sleek RFID blocking metal wallets on the market. They come in a variety of different styles that will match whatever you're looking for. Along with wallets, they also offer key cases and other accessories. The durability and sleekness of Ridge products is almost impossible to beat and it's definitely a major upgrade from your old wallet and lanyard. Get the best offer using link ridge.com slash mrcreeps, and right now you can save up to 40% through December 22nd. That's ridge.com slash mrcreeps for up to 40% off. Thanks again to Ridge for sponsoring today's video. I had always liked driving alone at night. It gave me time to think or to not think if I so choose. Because of my love for driving, the midnight trip home was one of my favorite parts about going to see my family. The drive was about an hour long, which was long enough for me to unwind but short enough to not feel exhausting. And call me old fashioned but I really enjoyed listening to the radio while I drove as well. I would tune into whatever local station happened to be playing, as I zoned out while watching the reflective yellow lines on the road pass rapidly by me. There often weren't but a handful of cars traveling along the stretch of highway so late into the night, and this gave me a sense of solitude. But I liked it. It was a meditative in a way. One night when I was returning home from another visit with the family, I was enjoying the trip the same as I always had. The skies were almost completely dark and with just a thin sliver of moon and scattered stars peeking through the black. The radio was playing some old jazz song and there wasn't a single soul sharing the road with me. It was peaceful. But just as I was sighing in contentment, the smooth and calming sounds of the jazz radio abruptly cut off into a roaring static. Oh crap, I hissed to myself as my hand quickly shot to the radio to turn it down. I now sighed in frustration, annoyed that my peace had been broken so suddenly. After messing with the dial for a moment and failing to get the radio signal back, I decided to pull out my phone and try to connect it to my car's speakers so that I would still have something to listen to. But after rummaging through my jacket pocket in search of the device, I at last pulled it out, only to find that the battery had died. I had a bad habit of not keeping things charged then, now it was biting me in the butt. Welp, I guess I'm screwed if I get into a wreck. I jabbed at myself, irritated that I hadn't thought to charge it at my family's place. With little of the choice, I accepted that the remainder of my trip would be without music to keep my company. After a few minutes, I became curious as to exactly how much of a drive was left. I checked the clock to see that it read at 12.34. Remembering leaving my parents' house just a bit after midnight, I concluded that there was roughly a half an hour left before I had arrived home. Sighing deeply in frustration again, I resigned myself to focus on the road ahead of me. The painted yellow lines of the road crawled quickly into the view of my headlights and underneath the hood of my car. I watched them carefully for a while, my mind struggling to remain focused. When finally lifting my gaze back up to the road, an old feeling of anxiety came over me. Maybe it was just the lack of music to occupy my thoughts, but I couldn't help but feel like the darkness that engulfed my vehicle was a little too thick. I wasn't able to make out any of the usual trees or landscape that surrounded the highway, nor could I see the stars in the sky. I thought back to when I had first started my journey home and distinctly remembered admiring the pinpricks of light when I first got onto the highway, but I didn't recall seeing any clouds or oncoming storms that would otherwise block them from view now. The feeling gnawed at my psyche for a bit but I shook it off as best as possible. I told myself there was nothing to worry about. Soon, I would arrive at my exit and not long after that, I would be home. 
And checking the time again, I furled my brown confusion. The clock still read at 12.34. That was strange. I knew that it had been at least a few minutes since I had last checked. Oh great, I said to myself. Guess the clock is broken. Still, I didn't think much of this at the time. Knowing that I probably only had about 10 minutes or so left on the highway before my exit. I decided that I would worry about recalibrating the clock when I got home. With no other choice, I continued driving like nothing was wrong, ignoring the creeping feeling that was slowly working its way up my spine. More time passed and I found myself glancing toward the edge of the road for a sign. I didn't normally pay much attention to the exits prior to my own, but I couldn't remember even seeing a single exit sign for quite a while. Still, I kept onward, trying to convince myself that I was just tired and I was misjudging the amount of time that had gone by. And finally, after what felt like well over half an hour, I saw a sign approaching in the distance. As I got closer, I could see that it was a large green sign that read, Exit 181, 1 mile. I sighed in relief, knowing that meant that I was almost at my exit. Exit 182. Just a couple more miles and I would be nearly home. After a minute or so, another sign came into view with a road that spanned right off of the highway. Exit 181, next right, it read. I passed by it unthinking. My leg beginning to shake as the anxiety that had been chewing at the edges of my mind became harder to ignore. And then a moment later, another sign approached from a distance. A little reassured, I slowed down a bit in preparation to get off the highway, but as I got close enough to read the sign, I found myself feeling confused rather than relieved. The sign read, Exit 181, One Mile. Speeding past the sign, my sense of anxiety began morphing into one of dread. I could have sworn that I already passed Exit 181, so how was it possible that I had passed it again? Before my panic could rise to a peak, I steeled myself and decided that I must do have just misread the previous sign. So this time when I passed the sign reading exit 181 next right, I made sure to read the number carefully so that I was certain it was 181. And it was indeed, I was sure of it. So as the next identical green sign came into view only a moment later, the words, What the heck? escaped my lips in the form of a scared whimper. I slammed on my brakes, my tires making an obnoxious screech against the road as they burned rubber. Sitting there in the middle of the highway, I stared up at the sign for what I was certain by now was the third time. The metal shook slightly from the wind as it towered over me, returning my confused phrase with words of its own. Exit 181, one mile. I did nothing for a moment but sit and read those words over and over and over in a pale attempt to register them. But with nothing else to do, I slowly pressed on the gas and continued driving forward. My leg now shook rapidly with anxiety as I tried to steady my breathing. The words, Exit 181, echoed through my mind as I approached the exit yet again. And as the road that broke from the highway passed me by once more, I found myself on the verge of a panic attack. By now I knew for a fact that I had passed this exit more than once. Surely I wasn't losing my mind, was I? In the end, it didn't make much of a difference. I was on the middle of the highway at night with a dead cell phone. What else could I do but keep driving? And so that's what I did. And all the while, fear pressed on my chest like an increasing collection of stones. Just as the anxiety was beginning to suffocate me, static suddenly erupted from the radio, filling the inside of my car with a loud squeal. Now, oh, what the heck? I yelled at my hand and instinctively reached for the volume dial again. But just as I touched it, the static of the radio was replaced with a voice. I listened for a few seconds as the gargled speech became more clear. Thank you, listener, for joining us on this beautiful evening. Were the first words that I could make out. I listened on. 
If you're just joining us, we've got a great collection of classics coming up. But first, a word from our sponsors. Bizcar is a beautiful place filled with beautiful people. I don't think there's a place on earth more lovely. If you're looking for a great old-fashioned community with the like-minded folk, come on down and visit us sometime here in Bizcar. It sounded like the radio was trying to sell some kind of tourist attraction or town, but each time the name was said, a static burst through the speakers. The radio DJ continued, Just take exit 181 and join our community. Now back to the music. As if on cue, a familiar sign came into view. No, no, no! I yelled in frustration as the words etched upon it were these same ones echoed on the radio. Exit 181, one mile. What the heck is going on? I yelled, slamming my hands into the steering wheel in anger and panic. Now the radio wants me to take this exit. Well, no way. Where is my exit? Where is exit 182? I screamed at the radio, half expecting a response. But only static buzzed in response to my angry questioning. Becoming frantic, I pressed on on the gas pedal. Accelerating well beyond the speed limit as I stared daggers at exit 181, when passing by it again. I looked out at the endless stretch of blackness that lay beyond my headlights, grinding my teeth as I did so. No matter how I tried to rationalize the situation, it all seemed impossible. I had never experienced any sort of psychotic break before, but it was the only reasonable explanation. As I tried to keep my heart rate under control, a loud buzzing screamed through the speakers in my car, and I once more heard the radio's DJ voice blare throughout my four-wheeled prison. Unlike the cheery persona from before, however, the tone of his voice had a darkness to it. Gone was the cheerful and inviting persona that invited me to his home, and in its place was something that I could only describe as malevolent. He didn't say anything directly violent, but I could feel the thread at the end of each word as it hissed through the speakers. You want to come to K? It's the happiest place in the world. The sun is always shining and the people are always smiling. So make the right choice. Take exit 181. His last words were slow and deliberate resembling more of a demand than a request and I couldn't shake the feeling that he was talking to me directly. A chill ran up my spine at the thought, but that couldn't be possible, could it? Then again, how was any of this possible? I had been driving on the same span of highway for hours by now and passed the same exit multiple times, and now, now the radio was talking to me, telling me to make the only choice that I seemed to have. But I got the feeling that this town I was being coerced to visit wasn't as friendly as the DJ made it sound. I wasn't sure if it was a mental break or not, but whatever was going on, I knew that I wasn't going to take exit 181. When I went by the sign signifying that it was one mile away again, I didn't bother looking at it. Instead, I just pushed on the gas more. As the exit itself grew nearer once again, the radio crackled to life once more, but before it had the chance to say anything, I muted it, speeding past 181 like a bat straight out of it. A mix of defiance and bravery came over me, but that courage was deflated as soon as the radio somehow cranked itself back up, and a familiar voice broke through again. You think that you can just ignore me? The radio DJ spat angrily with a startling intensity. You can't keep driving forever, so just take the exit. It's your only way out, and you know it. So do it. Turn right at exit 181. Take the exit. Take the frickin' exit. Do it. Take it. Take exit 181. Take the- I cut off the screaming voice of the DJ as I tore the radio from its console, throwing it on the floor of the passenger side, all while returning the screaming with some of my own. What the heck? What the heck? is all that I could choke out with my new hoarse vocal cords. I began hyperventilating as I practically pushed my gas pedal through the floor. 
My car was moving so fast at this point that I had trouble maintaining control of the wheel, but I didn't care. I hoped, prayed even that, if I just drove fast enough, I would eventually reach exit 182, or even 183. I didn't care what it was as long as it was an exit 181. But despite my dangerously insane speed, nothing changed. I flew by the abhorrent exit over and over again so many times that I had lost count. The radio DJ was right. I couldn't go forever. While I still had a decent amount of fuel, I was completely aware, even in my panic, that eventually it would run out. That being said, it felt like there was little else that I could do. So I just drove on, beating my steering wheel in a frenzied state, as the hopelessness of my situation slowly wrapped its gnarled appendages around my psyche. It was when only a shred of my mind remained that my peripheral vision caught something in my rearview mirror pulling me back to reality. Lights flashing red and blue. It was a police car. Crap, I said, immediately taking my foot off the gas and doing my best to brake from the outrageously high velocity that I'd been traveling. For a moment, a new panic rose in my chest. But then I realized, wait, a cop, another person. I knew that I might be facing a harsh punishment for criminal speeding but at least I had another human on this dang road with me at long last. By the time that I had slowed to a reasonable speed, the car had already caught up with me. Putting on my hazards, I pulled off to the edge of the road and tried to think of how I would explain all of this to the officer. They pulled up behind me, the reflection of their bright lights nearly blinding me as they parked uncomfortably close to my own vehicle. A few seconds later, a door slammed and the crunch of dirt underneath the boots echoed ominously as the officer approached my window. The form outside my car was tall, so much so that I couldn't see its head while it was standing so close to my vehicle. I sat staring vacantly for a moment, wondering if it was safe before they began tapping on my window to get my attention. And quickly snapping back to reality, I rolled it down so that I could speak to them and the deep voice of a man broke through the chilly night air. Ma'am, do you have any idea how fast you were going? The officer asked in an intimidating tone. I swallowed tears and did my best to respond. Officer, I'm sorry, but something really weird is happening. I began but was cut off. License and registration, please, he said sternly. I began going through the glove compartment in search of the requested documents, but continued trying to explain myself as I did. Yes, sir, but please, you have to listen to me. I've been stuck on this stretch of highway for hours, I said, trying not to sound too exasperated. Going that speed, lady, you'd better explain yourself. He responded incredulously. No, you don't understand, I tried to reason. I keep passing the same exit over and over and over again. Man, what the heck are you talking about? Have you been drinking tonight? He asked accusingly. No, I've been stuck in some sort of lube, driving by the same exit repeatedly. I can't get to my exit. It's like something is trying to keep me from my exit. Ah, uh, sure. What exit did you say that you've been trying to get to? He asked in an almost mocking tone. Exit 182, I replied. Exit 182, he asked. Well, that's your problem, ma'am. You're going to the wrong place. I stopped, looking back at his gaunt, towering form in confusion. What do you mean? I asked, paranoia beginning to choke me once more. He slowly bent down. His impossibly tall form collapsing like a skyscraper as he brought his face level to the window to meet my petrified gaze. I let out an involuntary gasp as what I previously thought to be a man stared into me with a rabid expression. The thing's features were awful. It was like some animal that ripped the flesh from a human male and adorned their face like a cheap Halloween costume. The skin stretched and warped in horrible ways around the bony, bulbous structure beneath it. Its eyes were too big for the holes of the mask and 
the sockets tore and contorted around the bulging, sickly yellow sclera. But worst of all were its teeth. Large and jagged like that of an anglerfish, they shredded through the meat that surrounded the false lips of the thing, causing the pink flesh to smack together grotesquely as the twisted, mangled thing, pretending to be a human, spoke once more. There's only one place to go, ma'am. Exit 181. A scream of abject terror escaped my lips as the engine of my car simultaneously screeched to life. I pulled away from the monstrosity as fast as I could, my foot putting the pedal to the metal and leaving a cloud of dust in my wake. Oh crap, holy crap, w what was that? I yelled in a panic, pounding the steering wheel hard with my fist as each word scratched its way painfully out of my throat. My vehicle roared down the black stretch of highway at over a hundred miles per hour. Its dated engine sputtered and shook, rattling the frame of the car violently. I had just started to let up on the gas when something caught my eye in the rearview mirror again. The red and blue lights were back and quickly catching up to me. I began hyperventilating as the realization hit me. That imposture was chasing me and it wouldn't be long before it caught up with my old junker of a vehicle. Immediately, I pressed my foot hard against the gas pedal again, like I was trying to push it through the floor. I watched as the speedometer crept back to over a hundred at a torturously slow rate. My heart pounded in my chest as I looked back in the mirror to see the lights getting closer. Dang it, go faster, you piece of crap. I screamed at my car. The engine began to rattle again, but I didn't care. My foot remained planted on the gas even as the steering wheel became difficult to control. As I desperately tried to increase the distance between myself and the false officer, I glanced frantically at each road sign as I accelerated past them. Exit 181, one mile. Exit 181, next right. Exit 181. I just kept going on and on. And each time I read those words, my anxiety rose higher and higher until I wanted to scream. No matter how many times I passed the signs, the words upon them remained the same. Exit 181, one mile. Exit 181, next right. The red and blue lights were so close now that they began to illuminate the inside of my car and I could hear the sirens wailing at near deafening levels just behind me. No sooner than I realized this, the radio erupted in harsh static, which nearly made me lose my grip on the wheel. The thing wasn't even hooked up anymore, yet somehow the furious voice of the DJ crackled through my car at a volume that threatened to blow my speakers and began screaming expletives at me. You disappointment. Take the exit. Take the exit now. You're nothing but a disgusting shell. You'll never be anything. So take the exit. Take exit 181. Take the freaking exit. The howling insults continued and I screamed in agony and confusion in response, matching the volume of both the radio and sirens in a crescendo of madness. Suddenly, my cries caught in my throat as the red and blue police lights became visible in my side mirror. With horror, my head twisted at nearly bone-snapping speed to see the imposter's car was now tearing down the road in the left lane, its front tires even with my own. I gazed with a silent scream at the abomination that sat behind the wheel as it returned my petrified expression with a twisted, sinister smile. And then, with no other warnings, he twisted his wheel causing the police car to slam into the side of mine. My tires screeched against the road as I struggled to maintain control over my car. Meanwhile, the radio continued violently berating me. Take the exit now. Take it or die. You waste of space. In the chaos, I desperately tried to focus my attention back on the road in front of us, only to see the same words that I had read a hundred times, reflecting the glow of my headlights. I took in a long, deep breath and turned to face the skin-wearing monster in the neighboring lane again. Tears fell hotly down my cheeks as my gaze pleaded with me, the creature still smiling through the torn flesh of its human mask, nodding slowly and expectantly at me. It knew as well as I did that there was only one way for this to go. Removing my foot from the gas, I began to slow down and so too did the imposter officer. I returned my attention back to the endless road that stretched on in front of me. 
The abyss that surrounded my headlights remained as thick as ever. As the small dim reflection of green became slowly visible in the distance, tears and snot continued to fall from my face as I prepared myself for whatever Exit 81 had in store for me. I didn't understand what this was, but it was obvious to me at this point that no matter how long I drove forward, there was only Exit 181 awaiting me. Wait a second, I said to myself as a thought occurred to me. I looked around my vehicle to observe my surroundings more deeply. All that lay in front of me was the same stretch of road, but I couldn't actually see anything but the same black fog that sat at the side of the highway until my headlights illuminated the space. Was it possible that I wasn't just driving through some abyss? Maybe this was still like any other highway, and if it was, that meant there were two directions that could be taken. As soon as the idea came to me, I kicked myself for the stupidity of it. Nothing about this situation made any sense, so there was a much better chance that I was wrong, and that if my tires left the road, I would simply fall into the void that lay beyond them. Still, the more that I considered my options, the less the alternative sounded preferable. If it was between spending my life with abominations like the one in the police car, and simply floating in the void until starvation took me, it wasn't a difficult choice. I wasn't going to do what these monsters wanted. I wasn't going to do what the signs wanted. If I was going out, I decided that it would be on my own terms. Looking at the sign as it grew nearer, I furrowed my brow and resolve. Exit 181 was approaching me again, but this would be the last time that I would read those dang words. I made sure to keep up the act and began slowing my vehicle more, even throwing my turn signal on as the abhorrent exit grew closer. Taking in a deep breath once more to steady myself, I glared back at the imposter, its vehicle still keeping pace with my own. Its expression not less menacing but still horrifying, nodded at me once more. And then as the exit approached for the final time, I slammed on my brakes without warning. The smell of burning rubber filled my nostrils as the seatbelt dug sharply into my collarbone. The police car tried to react to my drastic shift in speed, but it was obvious that the creature driving it was caught off guard. As a result, its vehicle sputtered and twisted in its front end to the right, toward exit 181, as it too came to a screeching halt. My car, however, twisted in the opposite direction. As I poured every ounce of my strength into jerking the wheel to the left, the imposter attempted to maneuver its fake police car to compensate for my abrupt change in direction, but it was too late. As soon as my steering wheel had stopped turning, I floored the gas pedal. The engine in my old car roared and its tires once again cried against the asphalt beneath me. I took one last look at the sign poking through the abyss in my rearview mirror and then my car tore me away from it and toward the empty blackness on the other side of the road. I closed my eyes and prepared myself for the feeling of falling off the sheer cliff that I had expected. But instead, my car began rattling as it took on rough terrain. My eyes shot open in surprise as I realized that I was now driving on the rocky, gravel median that sat between the two opposing directions of highway. I gripped the wheel hard, bracing from the bumpy earth below. After just a few seconds, more asphalt became illuminated in my headlights, and I twisted my wheel to the left as my tires bumped back onto the road. Without thinking, I immediately floored the gas again, now racing down the highway in the opposite direction of where I had left the false police officer. The radio crackled with more expletives for a moment. Where do you think you're going? Get back here, come back. And then suddenly it cut off leaving a heavy silence in its wake. I looked back in my rearview mirror, expecting to see the sirens chasing me, but there was nothing but an empty stretch of road behind me. As I searched my surroundings for any sign of the imposter, I slowly began to recognize them. Gone was the empty darkness that had previously swallowed what lay beyond the edges of the road. In its wake were trees, a grass, and distant mountains. Turning my gaze to the sky, I saw the sliver of moon hanging in its center, surrounded by stars which dimly illuminated the landscape around me. 
Confused and still on edge, I let out a shaky breath. But only a moment later, a familiar sign could be seen coming up in the distance. My heart rate immediately shot into my throat as I approached it, feeling on the verge of another panic attack. Despite my returning fear, I dared to read the words painted upon the metallic green plate. Exit 182, one mile. My eyes walled up with relief. Somehow, some way, I was free. I had escaped whatever nightmare loop that I had been stuck in for hours. When the exit approached, exit 182 I mean, I hesitated for just a second. Being out of energy and nearly out of gas, however, I made the decision to take it. To my great relief, every road from then on out was completely normal. And only a few minutes after exiting the highway, I found myself sitting in front of my home. It was weeks before I got behind the wheel after that. I even made some excuse with my job so that they would let me telework for a while. It wasn't until a few months later that I finally stuck up the courage to go and visit my family again. And when I did, I took the long way to get there in order to avoid the highway. And now I make sure to always drive back home before dark. In fact, I never drive on that stretch of highway anymore, or at night when I can help it. I've since developed an anxiety disorder related to driving. My therapist and medication helped me cope, but I still hate driving with every ounce of my being. I don't think that I'll ever truly understand what happened to me, and I don't think that I want to. All I know is that I'll never take that stretch of highway again, and no matter where I go, I'll never take exit 181.